without further ado, let's, um, so Avril from Killgerm talking about inspections and pest activity, what to look for. So Avril, are you there? Welcome. I am. You okay? Great. Yeah, fabulous. I'll, I'll leave you alone from the share your screen and yeah, t- tell us about your, about your presentation. Okay. Um, so I'll just do the quick share. Make sure that's working okay. Okay, hopefully everybody can see that. Um, so I'm Avril Turner. I am the technical manager from the Midlands, and um, I'm going to be doing. It's, it's obviously quite a short presentation, but it's about inspections and pest activity, what to look for. So I want you to view this as very much a refresher. So anything that is new information, amazing. But if it's if it's not, if it's all old to you and you you're fine with it, then take it as confirmation that you're doing the right thing and you you go in the right way about it. And um, like I said, I've been I've been doing this a, a good long time, and this is this is how I do some of my inspections. And I've also got some um, quite good pictures to hopefully add a bit more interest to it as well. Okay, so. Um, where to start? Basics first. Depends on the type of visit. So are we looking at doing a, a routine visit or is it a call out visit? I would expect that on a call out visit, you'd probably be um, much more vigilant, much more open to looking at new things and different things because we've actually got a problem to solve. Whereas I think when you get into a routine and you're visiting sites on a routine basis, you can actually um, sort of kind of switch off from a lot of the things on site. And we don't want to switch off things like that because you can see new things and we don't want it to become too mundane when you're actually going through things. Okay, depends on the type of pest. So it depends on what sort of pest perhaps we've had, rats reported, and we're going to look mainly at rats or something else. Maybe it isn't rats. Maybe it's been misdiagnosed by the customer. Um, And we we can look at those sorts of things too. And we can really talk about focusing our inspection on the pest that's been reported or the particular pest that we know has got history on that site. Correctly ID the pest. So we don't want to be misidentifying things in the first instance. That can lead to a whole host of issues later. We want to get the correct ID in the first place. Information from the customer. So I would um, obviously always listen to the customer. Most of the time they give you really good Um, accurate information but sometimes you can get different information from them that isn't actually helpful so I for example I used to have a um, it was a logistics site and they had had mice in their canteen area and every every single visit um, even after several years after the mice had been eradicated even the the guys there they would they would even say to us then oh we've seen a mouse and this is oh when did you see the mouse oh it was two years ago Right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so always, obviously, take it in a professional way, but consider it carefully. So this is um, a slight slant on this presentation: is um, food specifications and food sites. So most of the pictures I've actually got are from food producing sites or food factories. Um, so does the premises have a, a specific audit or something that you need to work to? Because that's going to add in extra facets to the inspection it's going to add in extra paperwork it's going to add in lots of different things that you wouldn't normally have to do on a a normal site so you're going to have these extra hoops to jump through and you need to know about those before you even start your inspection okay so where to start there's always a a sort of a a classic approach that we'd say where to start but um, first of all decide what you're going to do decide what you're going to achieve And then we can really focus on the collecting the information that we need, whether it's an initial survey or it's a routine visit. We need to really focus on what we need to get from it. We need to know what our aims are. Um, We can also use surveillance and monitoring feedback. So if it is a site that's already set up, then we can use that information from the monitoring systems that are already in place. Or we may want to install further monitoring systems or surveillance, such as cameras. So we can really we can really work on getting more information from the systems we've got in place. And also longer term. So this is, for example, we're doing the routine visits on our food factory um, and we've perhaps treated an existing issue. We've eradicated it. And then we need to know about longer term 
solutions and longer term management of those particular problems. And surveillance monitoring and more importantly, your inspection of that site is going to give you that information, particularly about the populations and the management we're going to have to carry out for these particular pests. So again, monitoring and more, more importantly, inspection can give us a really good indication whether the systems we've got are working or they're not working. And then we can take faster action to prevent them becoming any worse problems. So strategy success or failure. So this again, this is obviously it's debatable, but a strategic outside in approach. So for example, you've got a new site, they've reported rats. We can start on the outside, we can start and literally box off the outside and answer our first question, has it come from outside? Is there evidence outside? Look for that first. And once we've decided that it's not come from outside, then we move inside and we can start investigating other avenues of where it may come from. Um, so, for example, it's been brought into site, it's been delivered into site, not necessarily just rodents, but all insects as well. Insects especially for food sites, much more likely to be brought in than have an existing issue. Um, so there's our strategic outside in approach. And also not forgetting drains. We have to put a lot of focus on drains because that's one of the, the key entry points we can't forget about. Familiarise yourself with the site. So know where we're going, know what we're looking for. And also make yourself familiar with any areas that aren't frequently so maybe the contact says to you, oh, you won't need to go in the archive store. My answer to that is I'd, I'd like to see the archive store if that's OK, because all these areas such as voids, roof voids, archive stores, areas where people don't go very often are the highly likely places where you're going to get your pests harboring and going back to. OK, so there's. A lot that we still need to carry out on food sites, but I think it's really important to get a plan, get a site plan, familiarise yourself with that first. We may need it later on to actually mark on where our monitors and inspection points and all of everything that we're looking for is. And it'll also help you um, orientate that with the customer because they're going to know the site and we can actually say it's there on the plan and you know where it is and they know exactly where to go or where to carry out an action you've given them. Um, again, noting all the signs, so rodent drop-ins, runs, we all, hopefully we all know this, cast skins, obviously the, the outer cuticle of certain insects, and then any damage or to property or products, anything, we need to know about that and write it down as well, because all of these signs are your legal basis on your report to carry out treatment. Without those signs, without those damage to property without those physical attributes that we've picked up on site, we can't actually legally carry out any chemical treatments. We need to have a really good reason to carry out certain treatments. Ask employees, again, take it with a pinch of salt sometimes as necessary. They do sometimes embellish what they've seen and what they've found. Um, but obviously investigate it, find out and then make a professional opinion on it. Um, have they seen anything? Have they noticed anything? And then obviously never forgetting the basics so we want to ensure you look for the basics and um, we've got a, a little pie chart there so showing the four things that all pests need hopefully we all know this food harborage and um moisture a water source and then time any pest given time can proliferate and become very very serious in a short amount of time Also, IPM. So we are we probably carrying out integrated pest management as we go along anyway. We, we're thinking it through naturally. It's what we do as pest controllers. However, when we're in a, a food environment, for example, a food factory, even the audit specifications ask for evidence of IPM now. So um, all of the sort of pest control and pest management side of IPM is building and design machinery management. Um, we need to note down anything about that, anything that they can improve on, anything they can alter, the maintenance and exclusion. So that would be down to proofing, proofing that they need to carry out, housekeeping, again, housekeeping, hygiene, inspection and monitoring, also working alongside all of our recommendations and providing a 24-7 monitoring system. 
physical controls and chemical controls getting into our sort of the real eradication side of the integrated pest management and then finally habitat management so um what we're doing on the outside how we're keeping the safe basically unhospitable to anything that might be attracted to it Okay, so um, considering this in a food environment, it's not just the pest controller that's um, there to manage the pests. We've got a very strong customer relationship that needs to be there. In an, in an ideal world, the pest control contract will manage itself, but we, we, we will need some impact and some influence from the customer. They're going to have to carry out what we tell them to. Um, so we need to force a very strong customer relationship, particularly on food sites. Consider the um, audit specifications. So we may have to put other things in place. For example, we might have to have insect monitoring in place, depending on the product, depending on what they're doing, depending on the process that they're carrying out. We may have to have that in anyway. And then finally, all together, creating that ideal pest management environment that we need. So all of those aspects working together to create our integrated pest management scheme. Okay, so um, when we apply the IPM to the process, this is kind of covering all of our bases with our report. Um, so within our report, we want to look, obviously, we've carried out our inspection, and then we want to ideally find the root cause. So if we have got a specific infestation, perhaps we've got cockroaches, um, we think they may have been brought in because we found no other evidence, we've just got adults, they're not breeding yet. Um, we potentially found a breeding source and that's been brought in so we can then start to investigate the logistics and the delivery of perhaps products that we think might be good. Proofing, hygiene, housekeeping, all in that report to um, really cover yourselves and obviously gear those recommendations to pest control and pest management. Monitoring, obviously we've got a monitoring system in place hopefully by that point and then treatment if it's needed. Okay, so continuing on the sort of looking and listening aspects of this, also hygiene and housekeeping, we need that in and obviously proofing too. Um, I will actually show you some sort of proofing like things that you could use to proof. Um, also, hygiene and housekeeping can never be underrated. If you see something, write it down. It can prevent something before it even happens. Even if you think that it's, it's okay for the moment, it's not been there long. There's no saying that the customer is just going to leave it there. They're not going to move it. And perhaps the, the jog from you to say move it, else you're going to get something in it. So a preventative aspect, that's going to help it. And that's going to reduce perhaps severity in the future if you did get something. Um, carefully consider your findings. So obviously we're writing everything down and um, taking pictures. Um, carefully consider what you find and see how relevant it is to pest control. I know when I do a when I do an inspection, I'll have I'll have reams and reams of notes and I really have to go through the notes at the end and say, no, that's not relevant. That's just an observation I've taken of the start and really consider how relevant it is to pest management. Um, initial inspection and survey must be accurate. So we want to really sort of um really knuckle down on that and get it, get it really good and pick up everything and even if you discount it later it doesn't matter that's that sort of eyes open looking for everything that could possibly impact anything that you find or even help the customer and then that final point is the initial visit enough for you to make your decision do you need more time do you need to inspect further i would always go back if i needed to if you came away from it and said go through in my notes and says oh, i need to go and have another look at that area i need to review what photos i've taken and i need to go back to it so allow the, allow the time to do it if you can um, and inspect further if you need to, just to make sure that you are 100% on your decision. So remembering um, basic pest attributes as well. So it's easy sometimes to forget these when we're looking at loads of things on site. We're trying to take in the, the whole process, the products they're making, the, all the machinery, the sometimes very large buildings. And it's easy to forget that sometimes um, life cycles of pets and pests and behavioural attributes can really impact what we're seeing and what we're hearing. So, for example, many pests such as mice, rats, cockroaches are only active in hours of darkness. Um, to be fair, yeah, they can be active in the day, but sometimes we'll see 
more activity, you'll see increased prevalence at night time. So really consider carrying out the inspection at the right time of day to see hopefully the height of the pest activity. Use your knowledge of pest biology to hone the inspection to most likely areas. So I think for food factories, this is really going to impact lots of the sort of machinery and lots of the um, other processes that we'll see. Because I think when you first carry out a machinery inspection or a large factory inspection, you'll obviously take a lot of time doing it. But as we carry on, as we go back to the site again, Use your knowledge, find out where those pests are, and you can go directly back to those areas again. And your report can help that, even if between visits you've forgotten where they are. Read the report that you left last time, go through it, say, yeah, I remember where these were. And then you can really, you can really cut down on your time and focus on the areas where you found activity previously. Um, locate the source of infestation. So, for example, a call-out visit. We want to find the source of infestation. If we can find that initially, if we can find that as soon as possible, we can carry out treatment much more effectively, much faster, and hopefully get on top of that infestation before it blossoms and blooms into something that's much less manageable. Inspection tools. Um, you'll notice I don't have a I don't have an actual camera on here. I think a lot of people are using their phones now. I know when I when I first started in pest control, we were we were issued with a camera, um, and obviously that's nice to have, but. The cameras on phones now are so so good that that's that's all we have now. We just have your, your camera on your phone. Um, obviously we've got some torches there, absolutely essential. Um, we've also got a, there's a UV torch at the top as well, so that can be really helpful. Um, red filter, particularly for insects. So in, obviously the insects can't perceive that red light. We can see it. Um, particularly useful for things like cockroaches. Um, in the middle we've got an endoscope camera. So that's very useful to get into those void areas that you might not have access into. And as, as we know, factories, larger buildings have voids all over the place as they've added on extra buildings, they've added on extra warehouses, creating numerous voids in the walls as they go. Um, metal detectable pen. So obviously that's going to be detectable when it goes through metal detection. Um, they've got a spatula at the top there as well. So. Um, when we are looking at sort of a food environment, you wouldn't ever want to be putting your fingers into things that might move, such as uh, gearing or any belts or anything, anything machinery. So we'd always want to protect your fingers. So poke the spatula in. We can deal with a broken spatula. Um, oh, I have got a story. We did have, I had a, I had a spatula, obviously I've got a spatula, but I, um, I mislaid it, shall we say, in a bakery. The whole bakery had to be shut down until we found the spatula <laughs> to make sure we'd not gone in any bread. So look after your spatula. I did find it on a um, it was on a high level mixer. <laughs> it was just literally on the floor where it dropped out of my pocket. Lucky we found it, but the entire line had to stop until we found it. So look after your spatula. Um, sample pot. If you don't know what it is, if you don't know what the sample is or the insect, send it in to us. We can get it ID'd. Got a magnifying glass there as well, so you've got a hand lens. Um, a lot of the insects that we've come across, particularly in a food environment, store product insects, for example, are very small and we need to have a good look at them. And then finally, we've got a note board there, so a notebook or a notepad. Take notes, write everything down. It might save you later. OK, so that's kind of it on our actual inspections. But um, we'll, we'll go on to some rodents and some insect signs. Obviously, we've got our classic signs here. This is what we go through on. Um, principles, this is what we look at first when we get into pest control. Um, and it can be easy to forget these things as we've done many years in it. So we've got all those signs there. I'm not going to go through them. Um, but yeah, nice to remember, nice to see them all in all one place and think about it as a whole. What are we looking for? Any of these signs. And obviously write it down if you find them. Um, food premises differences, obviously hygiene and proofing are absolutely pivotal in a food environment <clears throat> um, and also building changes. So lots of food batteries like to change things. They like to change process. They like to move things around and that can obviously hinder the pest control process, hinder where we've got our monitors, hinder our inspection, but they are they can be quite changeable environments. That's something to look for, something to work with. And something to talk to the customer about and also write it down on your report. 
we know that if there's been changes, if there's been building works, then that can actually explain peaks and troughs in activity. That can actually help us. Um, audit standards as well. So we'd need to know particular standards of particular sites before we start so that we don't miss anything and we don't cause the actual site a non-conformity by doing what we normally do. So again, I think the main one with that is probably the monitoring system and paperwork for the audit standards. So obviously we've got a few obvious signs here. I think we've all probably seen a dead rat or two. Um, but obviously dead individuals, an absolutely key sign. I suppose it's a bonus that they're dead. They're not running around still alive, but obviously something still to look for. There's more likely more of them. Droppings in all their different forms. Obviously, these are rat droppings, but they were found in a um, like a plant room cabin. So plant rooms, you think, oh, it's, it's perimeter, it's fine, it's it's in the plant room. But it's always worth remembering that plant rooms have access to the main building. They have very large conduits that go right the way underground, and that can be a really easy access point. So anything that is picked up in the perimeter could very much impact the main site itself. This one's again, it's a, some um, tracks and smear marks. Let's see if I can just um, point them out. So as you can see, we've got tracks in the dust here, rub marks and footprints. And um, we've also got some quite significant smear marks down here. And um, again, some more here. And this is actually looking down on it. So we've got some holes as well. Got loads of different things in that picture. Again, that's all been rubbed away. So loads of activity, footprints here, pretty significant um, rat and mouse issues this one was. Again, this is um, a ducting system. And what we're really looking at when we look at the food environment is these, the back of house areas, back areas, areas where people don't go, areas where there's not much movement. And like that previous one, that was only because I'd looked over the wall to see what was going on potentially in the cavity that I saw that activity. And this one, plant area, we've got a massive ducting system here, but look what we've got at the top here into that, um, the small gap into the wall and then zoomed up here, we've got those quite intense smear marks. So we know there's a sort of a significant issues going on here just based on those smear marks and something to clearly investigate further. Again, smear marks, but sort of vertical this time as opposed to going around the ducting system. Um, obviously it's a grain store, right up the wall there. And these are kind of things that untrained people, perhaps the contact on site, they wouldn't necessarily see this, they wouldn't notice it, but we're trained and this is something that we really can look for, especially when there's um, lack of other evidence because they've cleaned it away and I've got a really good picture showing that as well. Okay, um, again, this is lowering into a box and then obviously the, I've got another picture of the, what's inside the box, but this is another sign that we can look for. So. Say we're in the warehouse area, most obviously most factories have a warehouse area, have a sort of dispatch box in. But what we're looking for in those areas, because they can be exceptionally clean, is other evidence. So this is evidence of stored into a box, the nesting inside the box. But anything around that, any debris, any droppings, could have been cleaned away by the hygiene staff. And this is what we really need to have a, a really in-depth inspection to try and look for some of these issues. Because they're hidden. Can be really hidden especially if this was inside a pallet so again we've got some nesting material in there they've been um obviously using it as a nest another one perfect nest inside that box and all you'd get is outside small hole small entry hole into it and then you'd be looking for other stuff around it and it's not there because it's been cleaned this is a, another one this is a kind of a this is a classic and you could easily miss something like this this is the um sort of low ledge on uh, obviously a cladded wall and you can see some smear marks here, but they, do look, they don't look like actual smear marks. They are, but they do look a bit dirty. And the only reason I can, I've seen this is because I've got right down on the floor and had a really good look around. And you can see a bit of the debris here where they've been gnawing up inside the wall. So this is mice and this is taken underneath. So not only have we got mouse activity, we've also got some store products, insect activity in there as well. But massive gnawed holes up underneath this low ledge and then I'll show you what it looks like before it's cleaned. So the previous picture all the hygiene staff would do is like oh there's something down here I'll clean it. So they've cleaned it all along that wall edge but not been underneath and then this is a picture before um, before it actually got cleaned and you can see how significant that 
that gnawing is and it's into it is into expanding foam um so yeah the, maybe the negatives of using expanding foam um so yeah lots to look for especially when we need to look a bit deeper into these sites then this is a void so uh, um a void area it's got a cover on it basically i've took the cover off and we've looked at it inside and found those um found those mouse pins and literally in the area you'd not know you're next to an oven you'd not know that they were there at all but looking in the wall voids looking in these sort of hidden areas these little sort of secret pathways and sort of harborage areas that they've actually found in this site and um, literally next to the oven no drop-ins no gnawing nothing but you open up this void and there they are and this is a bit more subtle but this is a warehouse and um, you can see right in the middle obviously we've got the human footprints on this on this um low beam here right in the middle we've got some really nice rat footprints so they've clearly been on that beam clearly been accessing um it's actually next to the fire door this was so clearly been using that door as well going going to and from onto some insect activity and insecty things uh, this is actually a video i'll apologize for the sound if it comes on because it might be quite loud but it was it was in a factory oh it's not too bad <laughs> Okay, it's slowing down my video when I do that. So, um, interestingly, we've got a we've got a detex blocks here. So, obviously, um, when we are in that food environment, we we can't necessarily use our normal um, normal blocks, normal rodenticides, um, and we are having to use sort of monitoring blocks. We have to. It's an audit specification that it is monitored. So, therefore, we have to use it. We can't use anything toxic unless there's an issue. Um, but we need to be aware that you can get other issues with detex blocks. So this is um, obviously store product insects. We've got tribolium, fly beetle here. We've also got cryptolestes. I, did, I didn't I only realise when I looked at it and reviewed this footage that it was um, we've got two different types of SPI there. Um, and then the picture on this side, um, Australian spider beetle tinctus So those are different SPI that you can actually get in your bait blocks. And initially you think, oh God, it's the block. But it's most likely, obviously it's come from the site in the first place. But they're gnawing into those blocks and um, they could potentially clear their line. They could tidy up, they could clean, we could treat everywhere else, but not looking after those bait blocks, you could potentially reinfest their line. So basically hold up your end of the deal as a pest controller and make sure your blocks are good and they're in good condition. Another one, again, initially you think, oh, it's, it's perhaps been gnawed by something. It kind of has been gnawed, but it's not been gnawed by mice. Um, this one, we've got some flower beetles here. Uh, the big giveaway is the dust you've got around here where they've been digesting that cereal block. Um, and then here, we've got a lesser mealworm beetle. So a few issues, a few issues on site, that one. But again, they're using our blocks to proliferate and that's not ideal. So keep them in good condition. Maybe some outside attributes, something you think, oh, you know, it's only a few mop buckets. Actually, that could be quite a serious problem, particularly um, for sort of waterborne fly species such as mosquitoes, um, yeah, can be a real significant issue. And particularly with that volume of stagnating water left in those buckets, we don't know how long they've been there. First advice, empty them out, dry them out, get rid, and you can potentially in, sort of enforce a pest infestation of mosquitoes into your factory from that aspect. So yeah, another clear recommendation there. Again, this is another kind of um, quite a subtle one, but a really, really common issue. So this is a, um, a water dispenser it's in the canteen area. And we've got loads of sludgy, manky, dirty water in there. Now, this was actually giving rise to quite significant um, fruit flies. So again, hygiene, clear it out, make sure it's make sure it's clean. Again, it's a sort of canteen area. It's a bit higher up. We'd perhaps be looking around at the or floor junctions underneath things and perhaps missing areas like this. So again, that's a key one to get cleaned out and obviously ideally replace that section as well because damage. Again, this is um, looking a bit deeper. This is looking into the sites. Um, I've actually got a photo here and this shows, um, it's obviously, it's a wash area. Um, we've got the drain there and this, this issue was um, a dark eye fruit fly. The area had been treated several times, it had been fogged. Um, it's still not finding a root cause, so they obviously they asked me for help. Um, and once I did the inspection around the area, we couldn't find any real any real sources. A couple of bits of food here and there, but in general, very clean. 
Um, and then I was like, right, we need to start digging a bit deeper into this into this site and start looking in the drains. And as you can see, um, we found our issue almost straight away. And it's got larvae here and this one here. Recently, we've even got some pupae right on the edge as well. So again, look a bit deeper, look into these areas. Then another one, this is obviously the trap or the fat trap in there or the drain. And this again, this is a food factory. Um, quite, quite clean from the surface, not too bad. And then we open up this and they say this is why you've got elevated um, drain fly plants. You've got elevated things and partly this is why block drain needs a, a desperate clean out and that would actually help a lot of your issues. So this is, this is another one again, this is a food factory. Um, we've got a gap here and it was only, I was with one of my colleagues and we actually, we actually saw a cockroach running into that gap um, and the area is a washed down area. It is washed down several times a day. It's a, it's a dispatch dock, um, ordinarily quite clean. And, and yet they were optimizing on this tiny gap into the door frame. And luckily the next year we went back, did the visit and they had sealed it, which was which was very useful and a really good thing for the site to do. Um, obviously, we were only helping out, we we're doing the FB visit. But again, this is another kind of hidden areas where you wouldn't necessarily expect to find things, but look a bit deeper, be observant, and you'll you'll catch them. Okay, so this is this is another random photo, but it's really interesting to think that, yeah, we're looking for rodents, we're looking for insects, looking for all these normal things. And I'll show you the first picture. It's, it's gnawing into an expansion joint. I was expecting to find mouse activity. I was expecting to find droppings nearby. Um, nothing, couldn't see it until I looked a bit deeper into the gap and I saw a, a toad. So um, this is the first time I've ever found a toad in a factory. Um, but again, it's, it's something else and it might highlight that we've got a proofing breach somewhere that's allowed this in. But yeah, it can be something else. So don't, don't discount that it could be something else. Um, a few positives. So we always we always tend to talk about negatives in pest control, and I always find that even helping with your customer relationship, um, highlight the positive to them. If the customer has done something really really well, give them praise for that. This is I took this photo last week, and I literally I said to the I said to the um, manager, I said I've taken this picture. Can I use it in my presentation because it is it's so good. It's taken them it's taken them at least two years to get this clear, but in a warehouse like this, you don't literally get better than that. Really clear perimeter, um, really good access to everything. For the past couple of years, this has been chocker. It's taken a whole cultural change for the manager who came in to actually get these fork drivers to not put pallets right against the wall. And yeah, it's the first time I've ever been able to get down that side of the warehouse and it's fantastic. So I said to him, keep it like that. That is such a good storage for pest control. You, that's what you need. That's what we like to see. And he was like, yeah, fine use it because it's such a good picture. But we can see this and we want to see this. Another one, this um, chemical storage shed. This is on site as well. Obviously, the door is open. It was open for me. Um, but everything's lifted up. Everything's, um, it's, it's an abundant warehouse. It's got buns underneath it. They've got bunded pallets. It's got... Um, boarded walls I mean this is something that's really positive and really really good for them as a site and I do find that it can it really helps your relationship if you tell them what's good and what's not again this is another one so um again lots of storage potential lots of issues in this area I ask them to clear it go back the next year and there you go the really positive result that's why I've got a photo of it I was like I put it in your report because even to an outside influence an outside auditor you can see that the site is doing something, they're being proactive and they're carrying out the recommendations that pest control has given them. Okay, one more. So this is an outside one, we've all seen this. Actually, not too bad because it is stored a good way from the building, but unfortunately it does back onto a railway line. So it is providing potential harbourage there. But six months later, they managed to clear it. Fantastic. It was actually a new manager that came in and said, yeah, I completely understand what you're saying about these pallets being stored. They've moved them to somewhere else, which is, you know, fantastic. And I like to highlight these things to the customer. Say, yeah, you've done a really good job. OK, a few proofing things, proofing options that might be appropriate. Um, obviously, not all proofing options kind of apply to a food site or anything like that. But we've got our plates here. Obviously, they're really good for doing round pipes. 
Um, and got some of the rodent proofing meshes here that you can squeeze into little spaces and little gaps. Uh, rodent barrier, which is also metal detectable, so that might be useful in a food environment. And then we've got the, the bristle type strips there, it can be fitted around pipes. Um, often, often when you do have sort of um, some sites are really good and they know exactly what to do, they'll say, yes, we know what to do, our maintenance will do this, but sometimes they don't. And that's when you can help and say, you could try this product, you could try this, we can help you with this. And again, that's helping your relationship with them as well. Metal detectable um, bait boxes, and then we've obviously also got our um, the AF snapper as well. So again, they're all made from metal detectable plastic. Um, same as the metal detectable pens, you might need that in a food environment. You might need it from a, a HACCP point of view. And then one of the final things I'm going to talk about is the allergens and monitoring. So we're not going to be able to use um, our normal sort of rodenticides, particularly in buildings, um, as sort of, because we're not allowed to use toxic substances in them at all, unless there's an issue. Um, but most of these baits actually come with allergen declarations. You might need that for a site, particularly if they, um, they're audited on it and audited site, they might need that. So obviously we can provide that. We hold, we hold, we hold all of those on record on, on book, if you like. Um, so if you do need allergen um, declarations, what they contain, what they don't contain, you can get that. It can go in the file. It can go to the customer and you can say, this is, this is the product we're going to use. It, hasn't, it doesn't contain those allergens. So in summary, one time. Um, don't ignore the basics. What seems simple and can, makes complete sense to you as a professional may not make sense to the customer. They're not going to have potentially the same level of um, understanding as you for pest control regard. So help them out, educate them, help them and talk to them and help them understand why we're making these certain recommendations. Correctly identify, obviously that's going to help you in the initial phases of the inspection and sort of site surveillance, that's going to help you. Obviously, tailor the treatment, get it right for that particular pest. Inspect at the right time of day. So as we said, some pests have got different, um, different life cycle attributes. Some of them are active at night time um, and that's what we need to look at. So for example, um, cockroaches are a good one. Carry out a night inspection or an inspection that a couple of hours after the lights have been put out and then you might potentially see more. Integrated pest management, we can't forget about that. But the only thing I would say about food factories and food environment is that you might be um, you might have to prove your IPM. And by doing that, you can do it in your report. You can have an IPM scheme. You can have a, um, a contract that sets out integrated pest management and designates responsibilities for certain things to certain people. For example, customer has to do this. Pest control has to do this, along with your method statements. Audits, again, we might have to jump through extra hoops. We might have to have monitoring in areas where we wouldn't normally have monitoring. Um, so initially, you might not have monitoring in that false ceiling. You might not inspect in that false ceiling, especially if there's been no issues on site. However, that's going to need monitoring. It's going to need some sort of surveillance, and that's because of the audit. They're telling us that we have to have that. Don't dispel the possibility it's something else. So perhaps if you think you have correctly identified it in the first place, it turns out to be wrong, review it. Go back and decide again what you're going to do. Get a new action plan if it is something else. Write down everything and take photos if you can. Obviously, not all sites let you take photos, but ideally, if you can, they're going to help you. They're going to cover you. And they, well, the picture says a thousand words, doesn't it? So they can really, really help you, especially as we've all got camera phones and we can take pictures. Um, but I think the key one for me is to write everything down so that I know what I'm talking about and I can directly refer to it. And when I'm going through a site with a customer, I often do show them my photos as I go through and say, this is here and point it out on the plan on the map. And they, they know exactly what I'm talking about and can then correct it, hopefully, and do what they need to do. OK, thank you. Hopefully that was OK. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Avril. That was that was great. Um, we haven't see, covered everything really thoroughly. We haven't got any questions from delegates. There's okay. lots of comments in the chat section saying that it's a great presentation and okay. you know it's great I'll to see someone with lots of with lots of knowledge. That's it. But I've got a got, got a couple just before we go on the break in five minutes. Um yeah. you made, made a good point there about allergens, didn't you? And talked about, you know, obviously the possibility with that. But quite a common thing you see is that, you know, the 
attractants that people put in traps, like for instance, like peanut butter is quite a common one now, obviously yeah. in food environments, but they use it in you know residential properties where possibly there could yeah. be people with allergens. I don't know. What what would be your advice with regards to that type, you know, monitoring? Okay. Um when you're in a I know I know actually people that have been have used peanut butter in a factory and they actually got a disciplinary for it. So because it is one of the major allergens. I know the when you look at the risk, it's so low because it means that they have to break into the bait box or the trap and it has to get it out there. But um regardless, you have to use allergen safe products. Um, I'm trying to think of a few actually. Sort of the Nara laws, they're quite they're allergen, they don't have contain allergens. Um, and sort of some of the other sort of products like provoke, obviously check, but you'd have mm. to use something that doesn't contain the allergens. And that is awkward because mm. we're not able to use some of the most attractive things that they like. <laughs> so it does make it, yeah, it does add to the challenge. Yeah. No, absolutely. We've just had a couple of questions pop up or comments saying it's always good to have a refresher, as you said in the beginning. It's, uh, it, you know, and that's what it is. You know, in pest control, we go yeah, on our daily to, job. I don't want to tell you how to do your job. That's not my place. No, <laughs> no, but the refreshers are, you know, that's what CPD is about, isn't it? It's about continuing your, you know, your your, your training, learning, refreshing. So, uh, but Mike here says, uh, what happens if you cannot correctly ID your insect and you are urgently required to say or do something about that insect? You know, okay. um, um, any idea okay so it depends what it is um if you can if you can kind of fit it down into a species say if you know that it's a type of cockroach you can say it's a type of cockroach your treatment's going to be the same for the majority of cockroaches um you can obviously send it into us so obviously that's going to take a little bit longer um if you're really urgent you can try and send us a picture we don't we can't always give you a hundred percent on that picture we'll have a go um, but and normally we'll say we think it's this, but send us a sample anyway to back it up. But at least in that particular, you can actually you can get an idea of it. Obviously, if it's something really weird, then we will definitely need a sample. But right. majority of things, yeah, we can we can we can hide it from a photo. But what's yeah, the best way for them to get a photo it. to you? Then would it be email or is there you know? You can yeah, you can send them into the um, we've got a technical email or you can you can send it into you can send it me I don't want to say that really you can send it to me and I'll probably ask somebody else yeah I'll pop your mobile number in the chat section and then <laughs> yeah no we get it a lot when we get pictures sent in and we'll, we will always do our best to see if we can identify it from a photo we can't always but some of the sort of um the the store product insects are quite a challenge especially the really sort of rarer ones they're because they're, they're, they're so small um, but yeah, we get we get a lot of pictures sent in of all sorts of stuff like droppings mm. and even activity, like people not quite sure what it is. And yeah, we normally we try and get back to you really quickly on it. So. And I think those um, um, stored product insects, you you showed an example of them feeding off of a monitoring block. Yeah, I find I, that a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had, a, do you know what, in my early days of uh, of industry, even though I I had stored product insects in a, um, it was actually a rodenticide, but it had some canary seed within it and they were feeding from that. And I had no clue what the insect was. I was brand new and I thought, I have no idea what this is, but it was a great learning opportunity for me because I took them away, had a look through all my, you know, technical manuals and books and identified it myself and learned about it and it, it's a real great learning experience because you really take it in because it's personal yeah um you know so yeah it, it's a fantastic example that was yeah I had a I had a really good similar thing to that I'd not been um I'd not been an FB long and I'd been sort of doing my really diligent I'm changing out these blocks and I'd literally got back to my car and taken these blocks up a site and put them I, don't, I must have put them back into my new not my new tub of Detex. And I opened it a couple of weeks later and I opened the lid and the whole the whole tub was infested with the Australian spider beetle. So yeah. I was like, oh my God, I've done it to myself. I'm trying to yeah. be really good. And I've literally, I rang up my technical manager at the time. I said, do you want a colony of Australian spider beetle? She's like, yes, go. I'll come and collect it. <laughs> positives from a negative you know um absolutely absolutely i mean just to finish off on a great comment um darren here said he's new to pest control so it's a very helpful presentation that's the thing you know you feel it's just to refresh it but some people that are brand new it's all new information to them so it's yeah great. i think i know it's like when you sort of even a new site it's a new site you've not been to before you turn up at the door and you're like what do i do where do i, where do I start let's get a plan Get yeah. a plan. Have a look at the plan. Familiarize, like, just familiarize yourself with the site and the process, and go from mm. there. Yeah.
Fantastic. Well, there we go. Perfectly on time there. Avril, as always, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. And yeah, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Great.